Getting bigger by being better. The number one choice for Bristol. This is BCFM 93.2. Well, we move now to have a look at the uh, film, recent film, called The Killings of Tony Blair, with the, uh, the letter S at the end of Killings is a dollar sign. Uh, this has been crowdfunded and is being presented by George Galloway. Great pity that our media can't do this kind of thing. But anyway, let's have a listen now to the first clip, which is looking at the style of government that Tony Blair brought in when he was elected for the first time in 1997. What we see developing very early in the Blair administration is the kind of tactics that one associates with emperors or uh, rulers of one sort or another who are non-democratic. They sort of just had a party in which dissent really wasn't tolerated. No decisions were made in, in the cabinet. It didn't operate as a cabinet in the way that constitutional theory says it should. People would turn up and it was a sort of little chat. If there was ever anything coming up that he thought you might want to argue about, he'd ask to see you beforehand and try and iron it out. He didn't want any clashing or discussion of ideas and a kind of collective thrashing out of a line. I mean, that it, it just didn't happen. Blair had this presidential manner. He ruled by, you know, sofa politics. He, you picture him and Alistair Campbell leaning back and sort of, you know, their feet up on the desk deciding the fate of the nation. The appointment of Alistair Campbell was an acceptance of the brutality and bullying culture that is endemic in Westminster. You know, if Tony didn't want to see you and if you were shown in to see Alistair Campbell, you were going to get a rollicking. You were going to get monsters. You were going to get monsters. Campbell was there with Blair and he was like the hard guy. Tony was Mr Charm. Campbell could be rude and rough and swear and... So they were like a duo, Mr Tough and Mr Nice, but shoulder to shoulder. Not only were uh, were Mandelson and Campbell the the pillars Mm. who supported Blair and did all his enforcing and his fixing, but they were often used as lightning rods. When things happened, when it was clearly Blair had, had done something appalling or wrong or stupid, they would step forward and take all the lightning for him mm. and protect him. He was very well protected. Well, um, that was uh, Will Self, Ken Livingston, Claire Short and various others. I'll give a list at all at the end. But also one of the most amazing things is what, what Blair has done with his career as Prime Minister is he's now making an absolute fortune. But the amazing thing is the British taxpayer is picking up the bill for very much of what he's doing. Since becoming a multi-millionaire, Blair has also become one of Britain's biggest benefit claimants. First, there's the more than £100,000 he claims as a former Prime Minister to run his private office. And then there's his security detail, costing taxpayers up to £16,000 a week. Eight police officers accompany Blair as he crisscrosses the globe, while others guard his houses. He is unable to walk down a street in Britain without heavy, heavy police protection. His house here in London is guarded by members of the Metropolitan Tactical Firearms Support Unit 24-7. I mean, the idea that the, the public purse is funding Blair's security to run what are, in fact, commercial operations around the world is an outrage. But he needs an armed guard for a reason. JP Morgan paid him off for the Iraq war. He was then paid six million dollars every year and still is from JP Morgan six months after he left office. The man is a war criminal! War criminal! Uh, that was uh, the Chilcot report where some people weren't very happy with Mr Blair managed to uh, make a little protest at the time but then uh, also we have the actual 2003 itself um, and where Blair tells us that this is a great opportunity invading Iraq and getting rid of this evil dictator to reorder the world this is a moment to seize the kaleidoscope has been shaken the pieces are in flux soon they will settle again Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. I think he suddenly saw himself as some sort of warrior in the self-styled war on terror. 
This is a battle with only one outcome. Our victory, not theirs. He changed and became, I'm going to show I'm tough and powerful and important and significant on the world stage. I'll do that by being best friends with the President of the United States. Blair needed a dose of sanity, but W definitely wasn't the guy to provide it. <laughs> every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. And I give you on behalf of our country our solidarity, our sympathy and our support. The special relationship means England is our lieutenant. The fashionable word is partner. We gotta go. That's the Thank word they like to hear. Tony Blair seemed to always be at our president's side, nodding his head and, and agreeing with um, whatever policy it was. And, and I believe he was even called George Bush's poodle for that reason. Well, as far as I know, uh, The Killings of Tony Blair is not available to watch at the cinema around here, which is a great pity. Um, there's some talk about having screenings, etc., in the, in the city, but it is available as a DVD from the theblairdoc.com, theblairdoc.com. Martin, what do you make of it? Well, they seem to be doing a pretty good job of pointing out the, the blindingly obvious, which is that Blair is a wrong un in every possible way that you can imagine. Do you think he was groomed to be pli- Prime Minister for this sort of specific purpose? Because it does... Sound like that. Both he and Gordon Brown went to the US before they were elected as Labour leaders uh, in order to promise the Americans that they would be absolutely on side with whatever they wanted to do. That's how Labour politics works. But, of course, the grassroots of the Labour Party are something else entirely. Yes, it's an amazing uh, documentary, very useful, very interesting. Come on, BBC, put it on. Time to sign off now for the Murdoch News at 7. McCat Mahami Bukawi is uh, back from the Sudan, is on in a minute. Thanks to our guests in the first hour, Labour Councillor for Central War, Kai Dudd. Also to Martin Summers there. Our sister show Dialects here on BCFM at noon every Tuesday. Thisweek.org.uk takes you straight to this show's links and its archives. You can download our MP3s, your heart's content, listen in the car or anywhere. I'm on Twitter at Tony Gosling. Wishing you a relaxing and enjoyable weekend. Do please join us for the politics show at five next week. And don't let the banksters get you down. From the Sky News Centre at 7, a man cleared of rape will still have to tell police if he wants sex with a new partner, but the terms of John O'Neill's sexual...